Hello everyone, I'm Mary Ellen. I am the music therapist for Transitions Hospice and I would like to welcome you all. Our March video is entitled, When the Saints Go Marching In. Now you might think that I mean this. What I'm really talking about here are two of the saints, St. Patrick and St. Joseph. St. Patrick's Day is coming up on March 17th. I think we're all familiar with that day. Not as many of you may be familiar with St. Joseph's Day. A number of years ago, my Italian friend said to me, hey, you always talk about St. Patrick's Day, but St. Joseph's Day on the 19th is special. We have a huge St. Joseph's table. We cook for weeks and we feed the poor. So since that time, I've always made it a point to include both. So I'd like to start out first though with St. Patrick's Day. And I'll be emphasizing the Irish and the Italians in America. We Americanize every holiday. They're all a little bit different. The Irish had a very difficult time of it as most immigrants do. Almost 2 million Irish came to the United States between 1820 and 1860, and nearly 75% of them came after the Great Irish Famine of 1845 to 852. Unfortunately, crop rotation wasn't a thing, and they grew potatoes, and when the potato crop failed, they were out of luck. So they took whatever money that they had and got onto ships, and set sail for America. And the conditions on these ships, which were often called coffin ships, were absolutely deplorable. Many people died before they got there. And when they got here, there were lots of signs everywhere that said, no Irish need apply. People were looking for uh, Protestants. They were looking for people that were solid that had been here for a while. So. What did the Irish do? What kind of jobs did they get? Some of them were maids, some of the women were maids, and one custom was no matter what your name really was, it could be Hepzibah, you got called Bridget. Every maid got called either Bridget or Mary, which was very dehumanizing when you think about it because it kind of took away who you were. But another job, in addition to iron work, which was another thing that Irish did and still do in Chicago, Another job was very important, and that was building the railroads and building the canals. So, here's an example of a song, and it's called Drill Ye Terriers Drill. And a terrier, in this particular instance, refers to a worker who blasted the rock. Terrier, nobody's quite sure exactly what it meant. It could have meant there was a delay until the explosion took place. Or it could have been Terry or the dog. But at any rate, here it is. Oh, every morning at 7 o'clock, there's 20 terriers working on the rock. The boss comes along and he says, keep still. Come down heavy on a cast on drill and drill ye terriers drill. Oh, drill ye terriers drill. For it's work all day for the sugar in your tank. Down beyond the railway. Blast went off. 
We have lots of evidence of Irish building a transcontinental railroad, building the Erie Canal, building the Illinois-Michigan Canal. And let's not forget to mention many famous Irish Americans. And the other thing that I'll say too is if as Irish came up the scale, they became policemen, they became politicians, they became lawyers, and were very active in government. But those of you who are from Chicago, and you don't even have to be from Chicago to remember some of our famous ones. One of them was Mayor Richard J. Daley, who was mayor of Chicago for years and years. And you'll see a picture of him and also a picture of another famous Irish American, JFK, John F. Kennedy. And next you'll see Richard J. Daley's son, Richard M. Daley. And they're from the south side of Chicago. There's Mount Greenwood, there's Bridgeport, there are lots of neighborhoods that are known for their Irish population on the south side. There are no, lots of north side Irish as well, but they tend to be the more upper crust ones. My grandmother used to have a saying that the north side Irish, they put out a bowl of fruit even when somebody isn't sick. I kind of wondered what that meant, but I think it meant it was a luxury. So here is a song. The south side Irish take a lot of pride and they're very exuberant. <coughs> And I'm Irish on both sides. My dad was Northside Irish. My mom, however, was Southside Irish. They were the loudest, so we heard lots about them. So here's a song for the Southside Irish. We're the Windy City Irish, where the good times are the best. Where every day is Paddy's Day and everyone's a guest. If you're Irish on the North Side or Irish on the here and say what I always do whenever I'm with a group of people and that is any time that you can move as long as it doesn't hurt and the staff didn't tell you not to do it it's good it helps you to get a little exercise a little movement without having to work too hard and it helps you be part of the music you're probably not going to know this song but the beat is a really easy one like this so I hope that wherever you are, whether you're Irish or not, whether you're from the South Side or not, it doesn't matter. You can be part of the music. My grandmother always used to say as well that everybody is Irish on St. Patrick's Day. So let's start that one again. We're the Windy City Irish, where the good times are the best, where every day is Patty's Day and everyone's a guest. Sing 
sure that if you are Irish, that it doesn't matter whether you're from the south side, the north side, whether you're from the south of the country, you still have that Irish spirit. 